Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, it's great to see that I'm getting lots more subscribers and a big thanks to Maths505 for reposting my channel. It's great to have everyone here. Um, today we're going to be doing a question that's a bit different to the last two kind of more integral based ones we've been doing. This is from the BMO1, which is the first paper of the British Mathematical Olympiad. And that's the paper that you sit that eventually, if you do well enough and get through enough rounds, you end up sitting the IMO, which is the huge international Olympiad that happens each year. And I sat the BMO1 this year and this was one of the questions that came up that I thought was really interesting. And it looks like it's very difficult to approach and it is quite difficult to approach but actually what we'll find is that it's, it's a proof that involves some proof by induction that's not immediately obvious and I'm going to be talking about how to solve it and how we can spot the clues. So I'll read to you what the question is. It says that we have a sequence of integers starting at a0 and continuing as a1 and a2 all the way up to ai and we have these integers such that for any given term in our sequence ai, either ai is equal to 2 times ai minus 1, which is the term before it, minus ai minus 2, which is the term 2 times before it, or it's equal to 2 times ai minus 2, which is 2 times the term that was 2 times before it, minus ai minus 1, which is the term that was previous. And it doesn't tell us how to distinguish between these two for any given term, so we don't know. Um, but we know it's got to be in either one of these forms. And this is true for all i greater than or equal to 2. Now it tells us that a2023 and a2024 are consecutive integers. And what it asks us to prove is that a0 and a1 are also consecutive integers. Now the thing that makes this so hard to approach is firstly, I think actually notationally, it's quite hard to get our head around uh, because there's a lot of stuff going on, but also we've got an or here. We don't know whether AI is this or that, and that means it's quite difficult to come up with um, a way to even begin with our proof. But I think the clue that we're going to be looking at proof by induction with this question is actually given to us here, and it's in giving us A2023 and A2024 as consecutive. Because what you'll always know about proof by induction is that we need to start with a base case. Uh, when we're often proving results for summations, that tends to be we say, OK, base case is when n equals 1, now let's let n equal k, and now let's prove that for n equals k plus 1, the same result holds. In this case, it's going to be a little different because we're not doing summations, but we have got a base case. So how could we use our base case? We need to come up with what we actually want to prove. Well, why don't we try and prove that for all i such that i is in between 0 and 2023, that ai plus 1 is equal to ai plus 1, or that ai plus 1 is equal to ai minus 1. Now, the reason we have to have this or here is because numbers being consecutive can go two ways. It could either be one bigger or one smaller. And so we'll have to treat these as two separate cases in our proof. But either way, we've got a base case that A2023 and A2024 are consecutive. And so now what we're going to do is assume this is our uh, assumption that ai plus 1 is equal to ai plus 1. So we'll deal with the first option for our integers being consecutive. Now, if this is the case, then ai plus 1 is also equal to either 2 times a, well, the term prior is going to be i minus a i minus 1 or a or we've got that a i plus 1 is equal to 2 times a i minus 1 minus a i 
Now, just to clarify where this has come from, it's that we know that for AI plus one, it always has to be equal to either two times one less than it minus two less than it, or two times two less than it minus one less than it. And that's kind of how we've represented it here. So let's rearrange these two expressions and see what it yields for us. So I'm gonna make A of I minus one, the formula here, the subject. So if we add A of I minus one to that side, we subtract A of I there and subtract one there, we get that if this is true, then A of I minus one is equal to A of I minus one. That's perfect. That is a result that we're absolutely looking for because it tells us that one less than A of I is just the same as taking one step down, which implies it must be consecutive, right? So let's have a look at what this tells us. If this were to be true, then if we add AI over here, we would have that two AI plus one over two equals AI minus one. And you'll notice that two AI plus one will always be odd, and we're dividing by two, which is always even. And so this will always be a fraction. And it's worth noting that we've been told that every part of our sequence is an integer. And so we can discard this possibility. And so we only have to consider the case in which A of I plus one equals two A of I minus A I minus one. And luckily this yields for us exactly the result we wanted. So what we can say is that if a of i plus one equals a of i plus one, it implies that a of i minus one equals a of i minus one, and therefore we've got the inductive chain that we want. We can move along each term in our sequence. So for example, if we were to choose i as 2023, we would have the a 2024 equals a2023 plus 1, and the a2022 equals a2023 minus 1. And then we would choose an i1 lower, and we could begin to find every term in our sequence, and we can see every one is going to be consecutive. But what about if they're not consecutive in this way? This was our first case. It could be that each time that a of, a of i gets bigger, our term actually gets smaller. We can't just assume that it's going to be increasing consecutively. It could be decreasing consecutively. So let's have a look at our second assumption. Alternatively, we could assume that a of i plus one is equal to a of i minus one. And so what would this imply for us? Well, it would either be equal to, again, two a of i minus a i minus one, or it would be equal to two times a of i minus one minus a of i, right? And again, you, we, 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 you may not even have to work this through because it might kind of seem obvious what's coming next. Here, clearly, if we rearrange this, we've got a of i minus one added over here, and we've got an a of i plus one on the other side. And again, this is kind of just the converse of what we just proved here. You'll see that we started with a negative and have a positive. Here we started with a positive and we had a negative. But um, either way, we're saying that actually then if we move one down in our sequence, all we have to do is add one, which works for a decreasing sequence. And you may guess that if this were to be true, then we'd end up with a fraction. It would not be an integer and therefore it can't be true. And so what we have is we've shown that whether or not this sequence is an increasing or decreasing one, it is necessary, because the sequence is an integer sequence, that every single term from A2024 all the way down to A of zero, by uh, the principle of induction, that they all must be consecutive. And therefore we have proved, of course, that A0 and A1 must be consecutive. Uh, and of course, we want to write up a little conclusion. I'm not going to write it out here because that's something you can do yourself. But we'd want to say something along the lines of, therefore, we have shown that for all possible cases of our sequence being consecutive, uh, if A2023 and A2024 are consecutive, and we assume that AI plus 1 and A of I are consecutive, it implies that the entire sequence must be consecutive starting from zero. And so by the principle of induction, we've proved what we, look, what we were searching for, which was that A0 and A1 are consecutive integers. Um, so I hope that was a 
interesting problem to look at. I think that the clue here for proof by induction was definitely giving us something that looks like a base case, and that's always something that's worth looking for in proof questions. And I hope this was interesting. Let me know what you want to see next, and thanks a lot. Bye.